everyone, it's me, Dr. Whimsy, and today we're talking about a healthy brain and reducing our risk of cognitive decline as we age. And if you took a look at the opening vignette, that was taken by me during yesterday's conference at the University of Southern California, which uh, hosted a series of talks on how to prevent and treat uh, both Alzheimer's and non-Alzheimer's dementia. So a little bit about what dementia is. It's cognitive decline. Uh, usually we will see, uh, uh, in brain imaging studies, we'll see damage, uh, various different types of uh, damage like plaques or tangles. You may have heard that uh, uh, vernacular, uh, Lewy bodies. There are all kinds of ways that uh, doctors, clinicians diagnose this type of, of uh, neurogenitive de decline. And we also note changes in behavior even long before there's uh, ev any evidence on imaging. So uh, the bi biggest risk factor aside from genetics that we see in people who are at risk of these types of uh, neurodegenerative diseases, uh, the biggest risk factor is age. Uh, simply growing older puts you at risk of neurodegenerative uh, diseases. The good news is that, is that there are things we can do from a naturopathic perspective that can dramatically improve our brain function and uh, even in, enhance our brain function long into our senior years. So that is what this video is about and uh, hopefully we can all incorporate these uh, simple uh, simple suggestions. Uh, first on the list uh, of uh, suggestions would be uh, to uh, decrease, eliminate entirely, if you can, recreational drug use. There were some interesting lectures that were given on the impact of recreational drugs on brain health, and that's because uh, studies have shown that people who use recreational drugs, particularly drugs like heroin, snorting heroin, can experience uh, brain damage that can lead to cognitive decline. And in some cases, it's permanent. So absolutely, first on the list, we want to see people stop using our recreational drugs. Uh, second on the list along with that would be alcohol. Uh, chronic alcohol use and abuse is also associated with increased risk for cognitive decline. Uh, the next thing we talked about was diet and nutrition. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, diet and nutrition def definitely came up. Uh, that has to do with the fact that there is a correlation between uh, what we eat and uh, brain health. Specifically, we're looking at two areas of nutrition that can have an imp impact on brain health. The first is diabetes and uh, diabetes prevention diets. We've talked about this in the past and I may want to go over it again in the future. That is eating a nutrient-dense uh, diet or what we call a Mediterranean diet. Uh, green leafy vegetables, uh, fresh fruits, nuts, seeds, whole grains, uh, uh, minimal amounts of animal products. The lower glycemic foods is associated with uh, weight loss control and it's also associated with better cognition. The second area of study, uh, you know, first being re reducing risk for uh, diabetes by having a nutrient dense uh, low glycemic diet uh, and uh, calorie control. That was the first thing. And the second was heart health, <coughs> excuse me, the correlation between heart health and brain health. And that is because we now realize that what is good for the brain is also good for the heart. And so again, we go back to diet, uh, wanting to reduce or eliminate foods that are, that are associated with uh, increased risk for heart disease. Examples would be uh, fatty foods, fatty meats, foods high in cholesterol, and replacing them with more uh, green leafy vegetables, again, nuts, seeds, uh, whole grains, being mostly plant-based. And uh, if you are going to eat animal uh, products, we encourage people to consume more things like uh, wild salmon, and uh, lean meat, uh, like chicken, preferably uh, removing the skin. So that's the dietary recommendations that are associated with decreased risk for Alzheimer's disease and uh, non-Alzheimer's uh, uh, type dementias. 
Now there is a genetic component and there are studies that are ongoing to find out who is at greater risk. Obviously, if you have a family member that uh, experienced early uh, degenerative decline, you do want to talk to your doctors about possibly genetic testing. Just because you have some of those genetic markers doesn't mean you're going to get uh, dementia or Alzheimer's disease, but it does mean you want to be proactive early on. Okay, so in addition to uh, removing uh, recreational drugs and alcohol and eating a good diet, we also want to see people doing more exercise, cardio. Again, everything that's good for the heart is going to be good for the brain. Uh, weightlifting and weight bearing absolutely is great as well as it helps with weight loss and maintaining a healthy weight that of course decrease risk for uh, type 2 diabetes and again that's really uh, great for the brain as well. Other things that you can think about are getting a good night's sleep. Believe it or not we've seen dramatic differences when we look at EEG and uh, other types of uh, brain imaging uh, studies in those people who do not get adequately sleep adequate amounts of sleep and those that don't. So we really want to make sure that you're getting good restful sleep. Uh, there's plenty of videos I've put out on uh, healthy rest, healthy sleep, and you can certainly uh, check those below. And if you are having uh, challenges with your sleep, you might want to talk to your doctor about having a sleep study done. If you have a condition like sleep apnea, that's not only associated with increased risk for cognitive decline, it's also uh, associated with increased risk for uh, coronary artery disease. So we really want people to take care of that. Meditation, as I've said before, this is not studies on religious meditation. We've had some conversations uh, with some of the people that watch this channel about religious uh, meditation. That is where people will uh, meditate uh, when they pray. This was more uh, research in a clinical setting on positive visualizations. Uh, for example, in the case of irritable bowel syndrome, positive visualization, imagining the body healthy, imagining the, pa the body pain-free was associated with decreased uh, pain. But in the case of uh, conditions like mental health and cognitive decline, meditation or positive uh, uh, positive thinking, but really more meditation, uh, being able <coughs> to relax the mind was associated with better cognition. Um, and I will link those studies below as well. In terms of uh, nutritional supplementation, there are two, uh, two uh, types of supplementation, well actually three, that have been uh, studied in terms of uh, positive impact on brain health. Those are B12, but I really recommend people take it in a coenzyme form and also in conjunction with other B vitamins. Don't take B12 by itself because B12 is dependent on other B vitamins in order to do its job more effectively. So I never prescribe B12 by itself, but I do prescribe a B complex. And uh, we've talked about that also in previous videos. So taking a B complex and making sure that a person's B12 le levels are optimal is associated with better cognition and brain function. Fish oil has been studied, uh, making sure people have adequate amounts of omega-3. Even if a person is only having one fish meal a week, it's associated with better heart health and better uh, brain health. Um, the final uh, nutritional supplement, uh, in addition to a B complex and fish oil that is associated with uh, uh, better brain health is vitamin D. There's been a couple different studies on the impact of low vitamin D, both on the immune, both on immune health, but also on coronary artery disease risk. Uh, the, the studies are mixed. But we do know that people who have low vitamin D levels have a compromised immune system and we also think that there may be some uh, cognition benefits to taking uh, vitamin D on a, a daily basis. Okay, that pretty much wraps up this uh, brief video on how we can prevent cognitive decline and the studies done on natural medicine, nutrition, diet, and its impact on our risk for dementia later in life. Hopefully we gave you some great ideas and simple tips you can do in order to improve your health that are cost-effective 
and not too difficult to implement. All right, thanks for watching everyone. My name is Dr. Whimsy Anderson. If you'd like to find out more about my work and simple things you can do to improve your health, you can see my link below. Take care everyone and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.